This is code.org. That's who we're working on. Follow the instructions from your teacher and on your activity guide to make cross tab and cross plot charts using the data visualizer. Okay, so let's head over to our data. Ooh, we have a bunch of stuff there. Um, and let me take a look at our activity guide. Zoop, for better view. Cross tab, use the words data set, length and parts of each. Let's head back to our data and words, okay? And then what did we want to use? Length and parts of speech. All right. So data visualizer or visualize data, length and parts of speech. And we want to cross tab. Oh, cool. We haven't done much with this. So use length, boom, and parts of speech, they said. Boom. Length, parts of speech. Ooh, and look at all this info we get. Okay, well, and maybe I should give this uh, cross tab link and part of speech. I don't know, something like that. And let's view it. Neat. And so I can always hit copy here. Sometimes my computer will take a moment. You can also right click and copy it, but boom. All right, and it says paste, right? Yes. Okay, let me paste mine. Okay, is my missing big? Yep, all right. Well, I might, let's see if I can, there, I can move it over some just so it's easier to see. Ooh, I might be tempted to even crop just so I can get it big enough to really kind of see what's going on here. Okay, now, what do we got? Which parts of speech show up most often in this data set? Oh, okay. Well, notice the blue. I wonder if that's highlighting the like hot spots. So it looks like nouns, verbs, and then adjectives, right? I think blue kind of highlights the hot spots. So you might want to think about these blue areas. Also, maybe adverb. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. Make sure you view, uh, I would say, look at blue areas and compare. So just in general, what shows up most? Which part of speech seems to be the longest on average? Ooh, so the longest, well, this is the length of the word, right? And so which part of speech seems to be the longest on average? Ooh, and what I would look for there is anything that's heavy towards this downward part of it, right? So which part of speech? Well, keep in mind, there might be only existential there. There's only one of these. Okay, so an average doesn't take into account that there's a bazillion nouns, right? But if there was only one existential there and it was all the way down here, well, then the average for that one would be 14 and the bazillion nouns, I don't know, might be like a seven. So you want to look at the numbers and where the numbers tend to be heavier. For instance, adverbs, that seems to be somewhat heavy. And again, I'm not going through all the details here but I'm looking where it gets heavier towards the end. And nouns might have 44 way down here, but the, look how much they have up here. So I would just t pay attention to what has bigger numbers down in this area and then compare it in a relative sense, okay? So maybe adverbs looks pretty good to me. It could be adjective, right? Look how big these numbers are. So you might wanna do a little math here, but look for bigger numbers at bottom to be certain you would need to add up all these numbers and divide by how many so divide by 14 and then you could be certain the average length of an adverb versus a adjective and things like that to be certain add up and divide by 14 then you can compare which part of speech seems to be the shortest on average? Same deal here. I would look for stuff that's heavy up here. Well, wait a minute. I know that this infinite marker is two. So the average, because all of this is zero, the average therefore is two. Do we think anything else has an average that's small? Well, I'm not seeing something well, that has 10, but it has a lot of stuff down here. Does anything have a lot up here? One, but lots of stuff. So I bet, and again, you can do the math on this, but I bet with one in that two column, it's that. About how long is the typical noun? How can you tell? Ooh, the typical. So when you're considering typical, 
you might think about the numbers, right? So is it typical to have a length of 14 for a noun? Well, not really. There's only 17 right here. So I'd pay attention to where most of our nouns are and kind of guesstimate what you think that length is. So pay attention. Look at where most are. Somewhat guesstimate the length in that area. Okay, that's how you're going to go about that. All right, cross tabs. Use your favorite classes data set. Cool. Chart and copy and paste the chart you create below. Okay, this is doable. So let's get out of this and cross tab, but I need to get out and go back. Favorite class. Okay, and data visualizer. Cross tab again. Great, it said, and we're doing favorite class. Okay, interesting. Hmm, all right. And now let me go ahead and view my snapshot and copy. Now, I probably do want to put a label on this, right? Because favorite class, so, uh, favorite classes, maybe. View snapshot. There we go. Copy that. Let's head back over here and copy and paste. Done and done. There we are. And I might want to do my formatting thing. Let's see if I can get my cursor next to it. I don't even know where my... Oh, there it was. Great. Okay. Well, what do seniors like most? Well, this is made relatively easy because what number is the highest for seniors? For me, that's computer science. So, seems like... Actually, it doesn't seem... In this data set, seniors like computer science the most because it is awesome. Okay, which grade likes history the most? Then you just want to look at your numbers and blue helps. It looks like blue highlights the most popular. So I would say what? Freshman probably? So and you want to double check what I'm seeing here. What is one interesting pattern you can see? Interesting is kind of an opinion. What do you find interesting? If I look at history right here, it looks like freshman 10 and then sophomores 1. So that seems to bounce around a lot. So that's weird. Literature, maybe. Maybe literature stays relatively constant, right? It's relatively the same amount. Um, What's another pattern I see? Freshman sophomore, junior, senior. It seems computer science grows in popularity, right? So computer science grows in popularity. And this is up to you. I'm sure you're seeing patterns that you actually find interesting as opposed to me. Um, or, I mean, maybe it's interesting to you that freshmen don't like anything even close to how much they like history. Or let's see here. Joop, joop. Uh, math really falls off in liking, right? Because one, two, five, so it goes way up to five, at least for math, and then zero senior year. Math increases, then drops. Anything you find interesting is what you want to talk about there. All right, scatter, U.S. states, median household income and percentage of adults with a bachelor's degree. Cool, all right, boom, boom, boom. U.S. states. And visualizer and me uh, scatter median household income. Okay, and bachelor's degree or yeah, okay, so bachelor's degree would be a college grad. Okay, ooh, I love this. And then let's see if we can get. Oh, uh, nope, so we're not going to use that. Okay, percentage of adults with a college degree. Oh, look at this, though. Look how it increases. So it, it looks like the more college grads, right, what happens with income? And it's not perfect. I mean, look, this state has a lot of college grads and maybe not the best income. But it seems like there's a general zoop. Okay, so um, let's do income versus college degree and let me view a snapshot and copy this right click paste yep and oh i should i'm gonna undo this because i'm gonna hit the backspace before i paste 
paste. That's better. What is the range of incomes on the chart? Ooh, it might be easier to see here. So the range of incomes, keep in mind, range is, well, it looks like they start at 40,000 and go to 80. So that's the range, right? The amount of availability or the amount of options on our chart. What numbers are possible or visible? So the range on my chart is 40 to 80,000. Boom. What is the range of percentages? Okay, well, again, it looks like 15 to 45 is the range. Or you might want to get more specific and maybe you want to see exactly. Well, it looks like 20 to 43. But if it's asking the range on the chart itself, you might do the entire chart. So that's kind of kind of be your judgment. But the range on my chart is 15 to 45. You could get very specific and attempt to get this exact, but that's a bit harder to do. Do you see a relationship between income and adults? Yeah, think about this, right? Look at the percentage of how many people have a college degree and look at how much money they're making, right? Do you see anything that looks like a general pattern? Zoop. So think about what's happening. What happens when a state has more college degrees? It's not perfect, right? This state has a bunch. Uh, oh, no. This state has not the highest amount of college degrees, but decent income, right? And this state has a fair amount of college degrees but not as high income as a lot of others. So it's not perfect, but what pattern do you see when the amount of college degrees increases and the income? All right, scatter, use state's data set, okay? In the state's fi table, find a combination of columns in the scatter plot you think is interesting. Okay, so yours probably won't be like mine because it's what you think is interesting. And if you're doing the exact same, well, that's kind of suspicious because we're just exploring this. So I'm on state's and scatter, and anything I think is interesting. Ooh. Let's do population. Uh, I don't know. Medium household income. Wow, look at this population difference. This must be California, and that must be Texas, because they have a lot of people compared to other areas. All right, so maybe not that. Okay, I guess I'll do this. So this is going to be, I'm going to switch these. Let's do college, right? So percent of adults who went to college, and then I'm going to do percent of adults in poverty. Well, look at this. Oh, yeah, I find this one interesting. And again, yours might be different. I would think it would be, but you can pick a graph you think is interesting. So college versus poverty numbers. Cool. And view. Copy this. I'm going to head over and I'm going to hit backspace and paste. All right. Now what? What is the pattern you observe in this data? Well, and yours is probably different than mine, right? There were some other ones that were kind of cool that you could see a definite pattern in. So maybe you do actually, maybe you flip the axis percent of poverty adults in college. But what about percent, uh, a percent of adults who attended college and... I don't think that was correlated. Nope, that's nothing. We could do medium household income and percent in poverty as well, right? You have options. Make sure you're exploring. But I like the one I did, which is college versus poverty. So what's the pattern that I observe? Well, in mine, at least, you're just looking for a general pattern. So zoop, it looks like the more, the larger amount of adults with a college degree comma makes it more likely that the state has lower poverty numbers describe what oh we get to infer some describe what pattern might mean or indicate so what might this mean well i would think if that's the case that having a college degree means you're more likely to make more money and again yours is going to be a bit different usually we can't be sure whether the pattern we observe it a correlation. One column is causing the other. Yeah, it's kind of hard to state emphatically that one column is causing the other, right? Because if you look at, mm, let's see, call it rates of college and then percent in poverty. Well, look at this state. Not that many, not as high of rate of college, like 27% maybe. And it's pretty low in poverty comparatively. 
So give one way you might do more research to try to investigate the cause of the pattern you found. Um, I might ask more people. I might get a larger sample size to make sure that this is true across the board. I might get more information from these people because are we certain it's just college? What if they all, I don't know, have blue eyes? So maybe it's really just blue eyes and it happens that blue eyed people go to college. So I would want more information and more people. And you want to word that in a way that, well, makes sense to you. Okay, cool. Onward. Ooh, which type of chart? So how many columns? One column or two? Oh, this is great. And then how many values? So if it's one value, bar chart. If it's many, that's when you want to use a histogram. Now, how many columns? If you want two columns, cross tab, right? Are the values strings? And that just means words, keep in mind, scary coding language. Or no, how many values? If there's only a few, it's easy to process the data with a chart. However, if there's a lot, scatter plot is the way to go. All right. How are the questions you can investigate with a scatter plot or cross tab charts different from the ones you can investigate with charts or bar? And we just saw it. So if you're already stuck, boom, look at this. All right. So I'm going to just do a summary. Make sure you're writing your own answer. But hmm, some key points. A scatter plot allows me to easily view and compare a large amount of data to columns at a time, right? And then cross tabs also. Cross tab is better for less data, but also allows two columns. Now, for the bar chart and the histogram, we want one column. So what's the difference there? Well, bar chart, histogram, and, and again, I'm just... And then think about the whoops, quantity of data as well. So how many values? Few, many, one column, and they give you some hints here. So make sure you include some of that terminology and your own words. And yeah, you'll have an awesome answer. Let's keep going. 